um, is, is this also related to to uh, sex magic and this kind of stuff? Yes, that's correct. Mm, mm. Um, this movie has uh, the the whole section of the film where it talks about the ritual and shows the ritual um, as he's walking through the mansion, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting because Tom Cruise's character has to go through seven gates to get inside this ritual. Hmm. <laughs> he uh, sees a the first uh, person that he runs into is at the front gate. Then he is taken to the house itself. He sees a second group of uh, men who are asking him for a password, which that password is Fidelio. Mm, yeah. That's the name of uh, Beethoven's only opera, hmm. and is also a story of a woman who rescues her husband from death in a political prison. <laughs> and as the ritual section of the movie progresses, we see that this is exactly the same circumstance that Dr. Harford finds himself in the midst of. Mm. He is immediately known to be an imposter, and how they would know this is by recognizing the mask that the individual wears. Uh, So he would walk in wearing a mask or a costume that is unrecognizable to the others, Mm. and they would immediately call him on that, as they do in the film, and he is asked to kindly remove his mask hmm. by this uh, red-cloaked high priest. And um, at that point, uh, we are in the midst of this Fidelio story where this uh, individual, uh, this woman, makes uh, a very bold stand to try to save Dr. Harford's life. Hmm. And as we get to the end of the film, we find out that this very same individual ends up dying of an overdose. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, you, you know, there, there's, a, of course, obviously a lot of interesting stuff in, in the, the ritual part of the movie. Uh, I guess one of the more blatant, uh, you know, uh, uh, themes in this scene here, of course, for those who might be doubtful, is obviously the the chair that the, the, this red cloaked uh, figure sits in, right? Um, have, have, I'm it's uh, I don't know if you're following you. Okay, if you're not remember this uh, uh, behind him on the chair, uh, it is the, the you got the two headed eagle with a crown on top. I don't know if you. Yeah, know this yeah, that okay, I mean yeah. there's uh, some obvious yep. things here also I mean for it's it's uh, it's it's again it's on these both both levels it's both on a subliminal level and it's in your face stuff also yeah this um uh, this this symbol this uh two-headed which uh is shown to be an eagle but which is actually a phoenix mm-hmm, yeah. is representative of the power of this group, which stretches uh, from the far east to the far west. Mm-hmm. And it also um, secondarily refers to the fact that there is a public uh, exoteric and a private esoteric meaning to things that they present and talk about. And, um, you know, you see this uh, type of thing um, in the United States seal, mm-hmm, yeah. uh, great seal of the U.S. Mm-hmm. is on the back of the dollar bill, um, and other symbols associated with this are the uncapped pyramid, and um, what the pyramid has to do with the United States, no one has ever come out and explained, mm-hmm. other than the fact that this Illuminati group apparently goes back to the Egyptian and Babylon mystery schools, yeah. which is a time before uh, Jesus Christ. Um, 
you know one one other thing that you also bring up in your article which which is very uh interesting is the the place the location where they um, did this movie um this this town in in England you want to talk about that a little bit yeah um the t- the town in England that they had done this uh, movie in has in the courtyard of a, a section of town which has several uh, shopping stores has this uh, uh, a couple of the figures from the movie with these uh, Victorian masks hmm. that they're wearing and I show the photographs of uh, that uh, Ellis C. Taylor another uh, researcher from England who he had taken those photos and um, the interesting thing is is that the biggest landowner in that town in which this film was shot are the Rothschild family hmm. amazing and, but that's just the coincidence yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> no, just the coincidence do, uh, do you know where, where the um, uh, for the ritual scene itself they're they're in obviously in some kind of a huge mansion or palace or, or something do you know where where that is um yes i do but it escapes me at the moment okay okay yeah sure we can we can return to to that because i um i, I remember i just rec- very recently published on on my site redicecreations.com an an article uh, regarding something called the Mother of Darkness Castle in in Belgium, and uh, when seeing the movie again and watching the outside of of this huge castle or mansion, uh, the it's some eerie, uh, very eerie, you know, as uh, similarities between these two, uh, and it's obviously very interesting, but. Uh, it, it it's not something that that is uh, found in Milton Keys, uh, th- this town in Buckinghamshire. Um, so, if we were to, you know, kind of continue here, the the use of of masks obviously is, is very interesting, and I, I I don't know if if you made this connection, but there is um, I, I think it's a carnival in Venice that I think began using these kinds of of uh, masks. Uh, I, I can't the, the name escapes me also of the name of this carnival, but do you know? Why? Why they have these kinds of masks in in the movie? These are very scary masks, by the way. Yeah, yeah. This um, this type of imagery is designed to um, symbolize the uh, the occult powers of this uh, group, and also some of the uh, different things that we see. Um, or different people that we see wearing these masks. Um, this is representative of um, this um, Venetian carnival, um, which in the, the Middle Ages is apparently when all this began. Mm-hmm. And this was uh, designed to uh, pretty much uh, uh, freak out the general public. <laughs> Interesting, um, and you know we have this um, this scene, I guess, that takes again takes things to a whole new level because after viewing the, the film uh, several times, you you can know know this notice that it's um, several layers to it. And in one scene, um, Alice lies in bed with it, with the masks uh, besides her, and I think this is relating to you know if if this. Uh, only was a dream, or if, or if it really did happen. Do you want to dive in, into that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, the interesting thing about this is, um, at one point um, during this film, they begin showing these visions or dream visions, lucid visions, lucid dreams of the Nicole Kidman character, Alice Hartford, who uh, wakes up at one point to find her husband's uh, very same mask that he wore in this ritual on the pillow next to her in bed. And mm. it's on his pillow, by the by. Um, so this begs 
the question as to whether or not Alice was at this masked ball, mm. um, which itself is a pun uh, as well, or was it her just finding the mask, uh, a discovery of her husband's secret life, secret sex life? And uh, beyond this, there's also the matter of this dream that she describes where she is uh, forced to make love to a nearly endless line of men mm. whom she did not know and she did not recognize. And during this part of the film where she's describing this and when they're showing this on, on the screen, she makes love to this um, uh, military figure mm -hmm. that um, it pretty much begs the question at that point is, you know, this real, is this a, a, a manifestation of her dreams into reality or is this just more of the original story mm -hmm. which in 1926, by Arthur Schinsler, um, was uh, originally a book called Dream Story. Hmm. Um, and you also make this very interesting connection with tying this together with uh, uh, with MK Ultra and, uh, of course, Kathy O'Brien, um, who speaks about this. Um, um, again, is, is this you think a hint you know that Alice the main character here is is under mind control and 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 uh, just as you say uh, are you know forced to uh, to be intimate with you know many different men at the top level or even at this ritual that uh, Dr. Uh, Bill Hartford was was uh, attending himself yes that's right uh, Kathy O'Brien who is an MK ultra survivor herself uh, she describes herself as a presidential model mind control slave, which means that she was allowed access to the highest levels of senators and congressmen and even people in the White House. And she wrote this book in 1995, which is entitled Transformation of America. Mm. And in this uh, book, one of the recurring themes that she describes was put into her head and her mind and her subconscious constantly was this idea of there is nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Hmm. Um, this is done to um, make the individual feel that they're, they are powerless, that they have no possibility of escaping this situation, and uh, Miss O'Brien, in her book, describes, you know, all the multitude of problems that she went through to rescue herself and her daughter, Kelly, yeah. uh, from this group, and uh, the damage it had done to her daughter, who is uh, now very severely uh, disabled because of what was done to her. Hmm. Um, yeah, this is awful and, and very, at the same time, very, very interesting to hear hear a story. Um, I saw a lecture with Kathy O'Brien a while back, and it's it's very interesting to hear about this, and and especially about the uh, um, the ty the kind of mind control that is performed, and also the uh, compartmentalization of of um, um, of their personality, basically, where where I guess we could have this kind of situation where a person uh, is like two persons within one, and and the only way I guess that um, uh, awareness of the other, you know, kind of will go back and forth if, is through a kind of a dream state, I guess, or or it would feel like a dream state, I guess, if if the the persons the person um, are beginning to be aware of the, you know, that they actually have another personality within themselves, a schizophrenia.